Hey guys, welcome to another Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Today I have for you a Fire Lightning Brew that I like to call Crash and Burn. Uh, as you know, I'm not really an aggressive player. I usually stay away from red, but what I really liked about this particular brew is that it definitely plays like this more mid-range deck that has a lot, and I mean a lot of different decision trees to it. And really it gets the name because you want to play cheaper guys like Tifa or you have a Kate Sith that comes into play and dulls something and then just kind of does nothing. But then you're playing cards like Magus, Brynhildr, Furion. You have different ways that you you can threaten an attack. Maybe they think that they can chump block it and they're going to be safe. And then you play another card, which is going to finish it off for the damage. So I really like this deck. As you can tell, there's a lot of interesting choices in this deck. So again, if you like the more mid-rangey kind of grindy kind of decks and you want to have a lot of decision trees, then this is absolutely the deck that you want to be playing. And again, if you're playing in the big London tournament this weekend, I wish you guys the best of luck, and maybe you might want to be using this in that tournament. So first, we're going to talk about the forwards, then we're going to get into the summons, and then finish it up with the backups. So let's get started. So up first, we have Kate Sith. This card is really just in here for its EX effect. Uh, when you either play it or you get to check it off of your damage, it gets to dull something. So th this is good for two reasons. One, it's a one cost, so it's very easy to play. It's very cheap and efficient. It can just doll your opponents forward, get through some for some points of damage, or it can save you for a point of damage. So I originally had this at a two uh, in some other decks, but I bumped it up to three in this deck just for how good it can be. And again, it's really important to note that you'll see a couple different decks or with a couple different cards in this deck that we have that'll either deal uh, 3,000, 4,000, or 7,000 damage. And even something small like Kate Sith in combinations with those cards can trade up. So that is very, very important. The absolute staple of this deck um, is Tifa. This is good because you always want to see this turn one and you always want to be on the play and get in that first point of damage. The way this deck is set up, especially if you do like a turn one, turn one Tifa into a turn two Kate Sith, this card allows you to get in those early points of damage, which can really help push the speed of the game and really make you stay ahead in tempo. So Tifa is great for being something that's, it is just the best turn one play that you could ask for in this deck. Moving on to our three drops, we have Lan. This one's just kind of an auto include because we're playing Kate Sith, or you'll see we're playing other ways to remove certain blockers, or we have tap effects, so we can give it haste. This card is just an easy way to guarantee damage, and by guarantee, I mean you have different ways that you can sculpt your hand, you can dirt plan out your turns a couple different ways where you can play the four drop lightning, you can play a Brynhildr and kill one of their guys. There is a lot of ways in this deck to make sure that this card is hitting for damage guaranteed. And I can't stress how important that is. Having the option to make it quote unquote unblockable is not only easy in this deck, but is exactly what it's designed to do. So once you realize and kind of get a, a feel for the deck and the different ways that it plays out, this card can absolutely close the game on its own with uh, as in terms of an attacker with some help of some other friends. This next pairing, um, I'm actually just going to put both these on camera at the same time because they deserve to be mentioned at the same time and they, they obviously go very well together. But we play three of the two drop Gilgamesh and two of the four drop Gilgamesh. This card I'm still trying to decide between is it too cute or is it really just that good and I haven't been punished for it yet. Three drop Gilgamesh is a 7k which is okay stats, but then it has the morphing ability, which says you get to double his power, he gets first strike, and he gets brave. Not only can this be used on offense, but it can also be used on defense if you're a little bit behind and you need to be able to kill one of their guys because the first strike would kick in, and again, 14,000 power is very hard to deal with. So this card really does fill both roles that if you're behind, it's either great to play defense or it's great just to get in two points of damage really quick. That can certainly add up. But then what's really helpful is because we're playing the 4-drop Gilgamesh, both of these cards can be utilized at different times of the game, and they serve different functions. 4-drop Gilgamesh is an 8k that can't be bounced by spells, so they can't use like Leviathan or anything like that. It has a pump effect, so you can always kind of threaten to buff it up and make it a 9 or even a 10k. But what's great is that if you are at uh, 4 or more damage, you can just break one of their 4s. Now again, with land, we have the option to say, you know what? This damage, we're close in damage, we're both at 4, we're both at 5, it's late game. I can play Gilgamesh, I can use the divider effect, kill off your guy that could have blocked land, and then I can very easily swing for the game. 
So I'm not sure if it should be a 2-3 or a 3-2 in one of these different uh, ways because it really depends on how the game goes. Um, I could also see room for a uh, 6 Gilgamesh in terms of another 4 drop. I just didn't have room for it. And I think that this is this specific line is where this deck wants to be. You do want to heavily rely on 3 drop Gilgamesh for the double attack. And it's just great for saying I'm going to hit you for damage or you're going to lose something. And then again, mid to late game, the 4 drop Gilgamesh can just absolutely come in handy and do some pretty nasty things to make you either catch up or stay ahead in that game. Turns out being able to kill your opponent's forwards is very, very good. And then you see we're gonna have we're gonna have a series of different support characters, is what these really are. Now you'll see we're only playing two of this Tifa because we also play uh, Zangan, so we can tutor for it, and because I also want to fit room for other cards. But she is really used for the 6,000 damage. Uh, water kick effect. Now, again, keeping in mind when we have uh, Zangan in play, she gains haste, which is also great, but she's really just here for the water kick effect. If it's mid to late game, maybe they play something that you just need to answer. Maybe they played a three drop Yuffie, you can just water kick it. Maybe, they, again, they played a blocker that could stop land. No, you say, I'm going to water kick that away. Land's now going to be able to be quote unquote unblockable. And then she's still an 8,000 power that they have to deal with. Water kick doesn't dull uh, as part of the cost. So she can remove a blocker, swing for 8k, make sure your land gets through, make sure your double attack Gilgamesh gets through. She is absolutely a great utility card for either removing or dulling characters. But certainly when it comes to dulling characters, 4 drop lightning absolutely takes the cake. This card, and again, I keep going back to land because of how important he is, but I mean this card alone just allows you to do things like turn 1, play a Tifa, swing for a point of damage, got it. Turn 2, they play a blocker, pass back to you. You know what, I'm going to spend two cards, play Lightning, dull your blocker, and I'm going to gain two more points of damage. Suddenly you're at three points of damage, and I'm at zero. That is a very good position to be in, definitely helps set the tempo of the game. So in terms of cards that I've just been absolutely impressed with, this card in the Lightning Ice deck, in the Lightning Fire deck, even in the Lightning Wind deck, there, there's a, I'm very hard-pressed not to be playing three of this card, uh, simply for how good it is, in just about every deck I play going forward. So again, if you've kind of been on the fence about this card or you're not already playing three, I very strongly recommend you bumping the count up to three. Now this is certainly one of the first cards that we see that's part of the uh, the burn for Crash and Burn is Furion. Four drop AK might not be that impressive, but when it comes into play, you get to deal 4,000 damage to one of their forwards. Again, I can't stress enough, sometimes your Tifa just gets blocked early. Let's say they, they play at 8K, so they can go Tifa attack, Maybe you bluff, maybe they take the damage, maybe they just block, then you can go, okay, well, I'm going to play Furion, burn your 8k, and now I have an 8k in play. Again, you're spending a little bit more of the resources than you would probably like to to play these kind of cards, but if your opponent also then discard two cards to play their 4-drop or even a 5-drop if it's an 8k, it allows you to remove their character and still have something in play. And again, we have so many cards that we can either give this haste then, or we have other cards that will allow us to... Uh, be able to remove one of their blockers, burn it for more damage. There's a lot of different things that this card can be doing. Or you can even play it early just to buff a block and make them not want to lose their character and then give it haste. There's a lot of different things that you can be doing uh, with this specific card. So it's certainly a very interesting addition. Um, I've loved it at three because I need to see it every single game because we play Tifa, we play four drop lightning. There's a lot of little guys that we need to make sure that they can trade up. Now to kind of top out the curve, I have four cards which are mostly just interesting but kind of good uh, attackers. Garland, 5-drop AK Brave, but when he attacks he gets plus 4,000 power, and that is just enough to punch through anything. So not only does he have Brave, which helps us obviously in the defensive aspects, he has the ability to buff himself up a considerable amount to make it very, very difficult for him to block. So this card is, again, it's a curve topper. It's something that you want to be playing mid to late game only. So you, you only really want to run two of these in a deck. Even if you're playing a, a very aggressive red deck, I only put one as a topper. It's something that you want to play later in the game when your opponent is out of cards, they don't have a good way to answer it. And you say, hey, you know what? We're both top decking. Now I have this huge body that you have to answer. And guess what? Maybe you're chump blocking every single turn because you're at six points of damage. And he's very, very hard to deal with. So again, this is just a great card that you can play late, assuming both you and opponent are in top deck mode. And then lastly, we play two of these six cost lightning. This one is a little bit more interesting, and again, I just want to stress that it is all about the utility that this card offers. You saw that we're already playing uh, three of the other lightning, so we can use our special. But again, we are playing six Odins in this deck, 
And it again is so important that you can either remove characters for that they can block land or you just need to remove their blocker assuming that they have, you know, maybe it's a Prish that's just walling you off. You need to be able to have ways to tutor up answers in your deck and answer whatever card that they have. And then again, RB1 is just an insane ability for what it does. Giving her a 9k they have to block and first strike in haste can absolutely turn the tides in your favor when your opponent is not expecting it. Um, again, this is certainly more of a plan B, definitely more of a late game card, but because we are playing all the Odins in the world, it is absolutely an essential card for this deck and is absolutely a cornerstone. The Garland, honestly, I could live without this card. I would not play three. I think two is the perfect number because you want to have five lightnings in the deck and everything that it brings to the, day, the table for you is just absolutely insane. So now we're gonna move on to our summons. Again, to playing into the burn aspect, it's an EX, it's a great spot to be. It's a three cost, so it's pretty efficient and it burns something for 7,000 damage. So again, keeping in mind, if Tifa swings, they block it with whatever they block it with, you can guarantee Brynhildr and kill it. Now again, if they're playing a water deck, they might have Minwoo, which can definitely cause you cause you some issues, but 7,000 damage more often than not is killing what you wanted to kill. Or again, you can set up the deck in a way where you can plan out your turns, you can set up your unblockable guy in the form of land, or maybe you just want Tifa and Lightning to do some work. You can absolutely think about a couple turns ahead and anticipate what your opponent is going to be playing and maximize your summons. And that is why we are playing the six Odin package. Three of the four drop Odin, choose one fort of cost four or less and break it. Again, can't stress enough that they're just gonna play something at different times that you wanna break, and this card is absolutely the best answer to it. We can tutor it up with lightning. It's a fairly cheap removal cost card. It does everything that you want it to do, and that's why we used to play like Ifrit and some other cards, and it's like, you know what? No, we're gonna play the best fire summon, and we're gonna play the best lightning summons, and just have a deck of the best cards and it has absolutely been working out very well for us. In a couple of different decks I've tested this against, it's been insane. And then lastly, we have the seven drop Odin. Again, it's an EX. If you, if you get to live the dream and flip this when you're taking damage and just get to kill one of their guys for free, more often than not, you can probably win the game on the spot or at least have enough of a tempo swing where your opponent's gonna go, oh crap, that is what I didn't need them to hit. And then you can play Lightning and then combo out three damage really, really quickly. So not only is this card great because we can A, tutor it for Lightning, B, it kills anything, but C, it can just swing the game in your favor. If you, if you anticipate it or if you can plan out your turns where an Odin would help resolve and get in multiple points of damage, this card alone, a very timely Odin, can win you the game on the spot. I cannot stress that enough. I haven't found a deck yet that has this kind of punching power other than the Lightning Ice deck. And playing three Odin for me is just an absolute must in both of those decks. You can horribly punish your opponent if this hits right when it needs to. And then lastly, we're going to round it up with our backups. Two Red Mage, being able to give something. Uh, haste is definitely great. Again, we play four drop Furion. Maybe they play like a 4k defense guy. We can burn their guy give Fury and Haste, get in a point of damage, and then it frees up your other attackers to do some damage that turn as well. Great utility there. Then we also have the Red Mage to make stuff that can't block. Again, we want to be playing cards that allow us to either, we can sculpt our turns to say, hey, that card's not gonna block, now my other guys can swing, or we're gonna play a Brynhildr in combination with this, let all of our damage go unresolved. It, it does a lot of interesting things um, in this deck, but again, I have to stress that this is very much you have to craft out your turns, you have to anticipate what your opponent is going to be playing, but holy cow is it rewarding if you pull it off. Two of Black Mage, uh, pay, pay two, uh, sacrifice it, put in the break zone rather, choose one damage for it and break it. Again, this is all about the crash and burn. Sometimes just being able to leave this up is enough to threaten your opponent that they don't want to block. So if you play like early Tifa, then play this, and you can just attack with Tifa. And let's say that they, they've dumped all their resources into, let's say, a Prish or something, and there are some really high cost of guy, you can say, okay, that's fine, I'm gonna get rid of this, and you're gonna lose your best guy. And by the way, I probably still have these other guys I can attack with. It has been fairly good for us. And the other card that you could play is uh, Black Mage, is another, uh, I believe it's two drop, but um, the red Black Mage, I should specify. 
I do like the Lightning version version better, and I want another Lightning 2 drop. Then we'll have, we have three Magus. Again, I realize this is another part where the deck gets the Crash and Burn name from. Uh, when it comes into play, deal 3,000 damage to all of the four your opponent controls. Again, if you play Tifa, if you play Lightning, suddenly they're trading up to a 7k. If you're worried about like a Zidane or a one-cost Yuffie, it can kill those. There's a lot of very intricate things that this deck can be doing that really gets the value out of these cards. So I wanted a three drop fire backup. The backups in fire are definitely a little bit lacking right now in my opinion, but they have such such strong ones like uh, Fire Red Mage, which is just absolutely insane auto include and probably the best uh, fire backup that they had to balance out the rest of them. So Magus, I definitely think depending on either, it's a meta call and also can do some interesting things in this deck, but I definitely would recommend running some number of them and then you can play some other backups if you want. Because we're playing a lightning deck and because we are playing a bunch of special cards, of course we're gonna be playing the best lightning backup for it, Sage. We have Tifa, we have Gilgamesh, we have lightning, we have a lot of different things that we want to be doing. We want to use multiple specials in the game that can absolutely win us the game on the spot. So Sage really comes in clutch with getting us back that late game army of one. It gets us that late game water kick that can often win the game if you have land in play. There's a lot of stuff that this card is doing. Again, you don't really want to see it turn one, but if you play this mid to late game, it's going to absolutely let you pull ahead and do some great things for you. So again, Three Sage. If you're playing Lightning, just play Three Sage in every single deck. Absolutely. And then to end the curve, we play Three Zangan. You saw that we're only playing five Tifa, and this is also part of the reason we're only playing two of the Water Kick Tifa. I cannot stress enough how important this card is. You see that we often refer to it as the Tifa engine because you're playing three Tifa, uh, or five to six Tifa total, and three of this card would let you search for a Tifa. But again, Either you're going to be able to EX burst this, you're going to be able to get a free Tifa. If you don't already have a Tifa, you can get a two-drop for a haste attacker, which, again, this whole deck is set up to either dull them, burn them, get rid of them one way or another, where that Tifa is doing damage the next turn. Your opponent goes, oh, crap, now I have to worry about another point of damage. Or it gets you a Tifa for the water kick, so you get even more damage. So, again, it, it very much is important for how this deck is set up, but I would very strongly recommend that if you are playing a red deck, and you have the Tifas, and you have it set up in a way where either the dulling or the damage is important, you absolutely need to run three of this card. And then again, it gives a four drop Tifa haste, which is insane for this deck, and just insane in general. An AK haster that can water kick and dull something, um, the same turn it comes into play and have all that value is just absolutely absurd. So again, I absolutely have had a blast with this deck, even though I am not much of a not much of a red player, but it has so many great utility cards or different cards that let you do so many interesting things. And again, having Tifa, having Land, having Gilgamesh, having all these cards that really work together and synergize very, very well has just been an absolute pleasure to play. So again, if you're looking for a deck that takes a little bit more thinking but can really reward you for the plays that you're gonna make and you just wanna crash and burn, this is absolutely the deck for you guys. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let us know what you think about this deck in the comments down below. Let us know what changes you would make. Again, I threw this together really, really quickly, and I love it, but I definitely think some things could be changed. Let us know what you guys think. All right, thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one.